never will there ever be a time like this. This is the golden era, ladies and gentlemen, and you are living it or have lived it. And I am talking about the petrol gas powered cars. Now, if you grew up working on or driving something like a 1968 Ford Mustang Fastback or a 1991 Honda Civic with the B16 in it, then you, my friends, have lived in the golden era. If you think about it, we all get caught up with the craziness of life, work, our goals, relationships, everything in between. And you forget that as time goes by, certain things will never be repeated again. If you think about the introduction of Atari or the black and white TV to now the 8K TVs that we see at Best Buy, the small little area in time and honestly in human existence of the petrol car is a very small one. People are gonna read back, they're gonna watch vintage videos and they're gonna try to look at the vintage history of the automobile and of the petrol race cars or sports cars. And we were born in an era that we got to enjoy them. We got to enjoy the span of them. Some of us got to enjoy the whole entire enchilada. But guys, I'm making this video not to bash on EV or be like, oh my gosh, like this is the end of the era, but to bring awareness to something that a lot of people don't recognize. Now, Elise, would be my witness that I called the Toyota Supra and the Acura Type R that they were gonna go crazy. Well, I jumped on the Supra, and of course I sold it for a lot more than I paid for it. I didn't jump on a Type R, but when I called it, the Type R was, I don't know, you can pick up a Type R for like 15 grand, no lie, or less than that, it was crazy. Good luck doing that now. <laughs> but essentially, the reason why I'm making this video is to remind you guys to both be grateful, but to plan for this big change and transition that's coming. So essentially, somebody put it really good, uh, in really good terms. Um, I forgot who it was, so I can't credit, but they said, if you think about horses, cars replaced horses. I mean, at, back in the Wild Wild West time, your horse was your car, and I mean, that was it, right? You were proud of it, and then you went to the carriage, and you went to the car. But somebody said, if you look at it now, horses are a luxury. And the people who have horses, most of them are wealthy, to be honest with you. I'm sure not everyone who has horses is wealthy, but horses are not cheap. You know, you gotta feed him, house him, maintain him. I know that you could rent him, lease him, which is crazy. <laughs> but essentially, horses is a expense. It's pretty expensive. And they told me that cars are gonna be like that in the future. And I believe that because if you think about how things are changing with EV, you know, gas is gonna be not as available as now. It's gonna be probably more charging stations. It's gonna be like this crazy charging station, like stop and go, you know, place. Um, and essentially, if you own a classic car or vintage car, or it's, you're not even gonna be using those terms. Gas is gonna replace the word gas uh, I mean, gas is gonna replace the word vintage and classic because essentially somebody's gonna be like, oh my gosh, you have a gas car? That's how crazy it's gonna be. So what's gonna happen is all these really basic cars out there, and I hate to be mean, but all these mass produced cars, I'm not talking about those. Those are probably gonna be crushed, recycled, reused for their parts. They're unfortunately not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the finite, low production count, low surviving sports cars. We're talking about, you know, original R34s, Ford Mustang Fastbacks. We're talking about the really cool, you know, RX-7s, Supras, the original M3s, you know, the E30s. We're talking about the really rare, even the Ferrari F430s, you know, the, the 458s, all those cars, you know, the, the, the 911 turbos, the GT2s, GT3s, um, all these cars are gonna be in a category that are gonna be super collectible. So what happens, guys? Supply and demand, right? So something that you could buy now, not, not so much easily, but accessible to a bigger group, is gonna become even more expensive, and it's gonna be more sought after, and for you to own something, it's gonna cost a lot more because I bet you there's gonna be a special tax, 
you know, they're going to know the state, the government's going to know they're going to be like, Oh, you want a classic gas powered car? Well, first off, if you're buying a vintage Ferrari or Porsche or Japanese car, they know that you're going to have money and they're going to know that they're going to tax you with that special gas rate. Gas is going to be expensive. Parts are going to be expensive. If you don't know how to work on your own cars, taking it to a vintage gas shop is going to be expensive. It's going to be crazy. So what I am doing in this video is empowering you to start thinking ahead and start really thinking about the cars that you guys want before this happens. Before this happens, you need to have the cars that you want before you have to pay five, 10 times the amount later on for your dream car. For me, my list is very small um, because I've had over 45 cars and I know what I want and I also know that I'm not gonna live long, um, but I also know that it's a reasonable list. So just to give you an idea, I want a Ford GT. I think that's an amazing car. I've always wanted those, very expensive. A Ferrari 458. A 1991 Honda Civic hatchback with a B16 or a Type R motor. K20, I guess I'd take it, but I want something original. And I wanna circle back and get a Toyota Supra, a six speed, that's complete monster. So. That's kind of my list that I want, right? And I have to start thinking about it now because as time goes by, things are gonna change. So this video is also to make you guys be interactive. I want you guys in the comment section to actually take this theory, which I think has a lot of uh, uh, merit to it, and question yourself, what cars do you want if you knew that everything was gonna become 10 or 50 times as expensive later on and that your chances of getting it will be almost very small? So what are the list of cars that you wanna get before everything changes? Because even though I might be hypothetically speaking, a lot of car manufacturers have already stated that they will only be producing EV cars at a later date and that date is not too far from now. Well guys, I look forward to reading your comments. Thanks for watching and we will talk to you soon.